Hello, James Norton. How you doing? I'm not too bad. Uh, whereabouts are you currently in the world? I'm currently in sunny Cardiff. You're in sunny Cardiff? I'm in cloudy Peckham. In South oh, Carolina. well. Well, who, who's got the better end of that deal? I'm just going to say, James. I'd love to be in Cardiff right now. What a beautiful city. Yeah. James, uh, I watched Nowhere Special last night, and it's such an amazing film. It really pulls on the heartstrings, doesn't it? I hope so. Yeah. We, we, we knew that, well, the subject matter is is inherently moving and um you know there is a there is a sort of sadness to that story but we also made we really wanted to make sure that this film wasn't a film you know exclusively about dying and death and, and illness it's a film about hope and life and loving the moments you know the moments you have left with your loved ones cherishing those moments and mm -hmm. generally the, the reaction we've had is really wonderful it's exactly what we hoped which is that it is a sad movie and it does make people cry but at the same time, people generally leave the cinema or whatever and they reach for their phone and they ring their parents or their kids and they, they reach over to the people they're watching it with and give them a hug. And, you know, if a piece of, piece of art, piece of cinema can encourage you to, 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 to reach out to your loved ones, give them a hug, that's great. I'm happy, happy with the film. Yeah, and you mentioned just some of those reactions there. Well, uh, all the early reactions for this film have been incredible, saying it's been one of your uh, best performances to date. As an actor, is there any better compliment? No, well, I mean, no, not really. No, I, to, to, it, it was one of the most, if not the most special experiences I've had on a film set because all you can hope for um, when making a, a film, I think at least the kind of priority list and the, the hierarchy of sort of um, priorities for me is an honest and, and an authentic experience. And when you're working with a kid like Daniel, it can be a disaster. And you know, that's why they say <laughs> with animals and children because you never know what you're gonna get back. But when it works, when you've got a four-year-old who is looking at you in real time, these big, beautiful eyes, and I'm, I'm reading a book about, you know, where dinosaurs go to die, or I'm talking about death in, in very basic terms, and Daniel's learning in real time, mm. the actor as well as the character. And so I, I have this incredible thing to react to. You know, we are in that moment together, and it's incredibly present, and that's what you hope for from an actor's point of view you know you've got all the cameras and the toys and the sort of stuff around you but the sacred part of it is just the communication between the two people and Daniel and I had a very pure connection and it was real and so I left I left every day despite the subject matter feeling like I was I was just very privileged to be there I loved it yeah and, and Daniel of course Daniel Lamont he's four years old so actually when reading the script and seeing that you were going to work with a four-year-old and, and somebody of that age what was it quite daunting for you yeah, I mean, it very, <laughs> very much. As I said, because it because it's so unpredictable. Because also, we didn't really have a rule book. I mean, there are various makings of films with kids, and you know, certain people have certain ideas about how to do it. You cut around the kid, or um, you know, you have contingency plans in place in case stuff goes wrong. Usually, kids under sort of act roles under sort of three, you usually cast twins, so that if one of them starts to get upset or tired, then you can switch them in for a. For, you know their brother or their sister um we didn't have daniel was a doesn't have a twin so we we required you know his presence every day and he didn't cry once I, the, wow. whole, the only day he cried was the day he had to cry in that <laughs> and the reason he cried is because he he was worried about being nasty to me he said to his mum at the morning he, was like, we, he knew the scene was coming up that he had to be bolshy and angry and he, he got really upset i don't want to be angry with james why should i be angry it's like that's the role and he said like, I don't want it, it was <laughs> that's so sweet uh, did you build up quite a, a good relationship then with Daniel kind of on on set yeah and beforehand I mean m m the most important piece of preparation for the movie for me was was going to his house and just hanging out and being a kid you know I went to his his lovely lovely family's house um Cash's mom Jeffrey his dad and Aaron his sister we just hung out we went to the park we ate food I played with Daniel and, you know, played with his toys in his bedroom and, and the garden and just, just became his friend. And, and his sort of, he called me, I was called his fake dad, you know. His fake <laughs> How did that feel? <laughs> it was lovely to be accepted into such a, on a genuinely lovely family. And we've stayed in touch and we send each other little videos and, and you know, call each other occasionally. And, um, you know, they're lovely, like really lovely, really warm, genuinely um, affectionate relationship was built between me and Daniel and the family. Um, so yeah, it was great. And, and, and it worked, you know, when he came to set, he wanted to be there. And that mm. was, the thing. He, not only did he want to be there, he loved being there, he thrived. 
and and he he sort of looked at me and I don't know I think he was sort of fascinated by the performance of it all he didn't really understand performance he didn't understand what it was to enter into a character and yet he sorry about this that's all right I thought it was gonna be me oh <laughs> I was terrified I'm so sorry about that that's um it's I thought my anyway it's the way <laughs> It's so interconnected. You can have a phone over there calling. Anyway, but no, he 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 didn't know really what it was to leave Daniel and enter Michael. And yet, when they called action, he would leave this very bouncy, exuberant child and become this very kind of mindful, kind of quite quiet, considered child. And then two minutes later, they call cut, and he'd be like bouncing back into Daniel. And we would look at him just bewildered, like, "How do you know what to do? How do yeah. you know play?" It was. It was really, really magical. And I suppose when you're actually working with someone that young, you can kind of almost picture kind of what, what they're going to go on to in the future. Kind of, it's almost the, the building blocks for their career as an actor. Yes, I know. I mean, I, I, his parents are so great. They're like, you know, they could, and they have already been offered, you know, representation and, and, and big movies. I think Daniel's been offered films since the film. Um, and they said no. And Daniel has said, I want to go to school and he's not like, he doesn't want to suddenly become a movie star. Um, he's just taken up karate, which he's really excited about. <laughs> Guitar, which he's really good at. Weirdly, his favorite artist is Johnny Cash, which for a four year old or six year old. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but no, I, I mean, I, I think he could, if he wanted to have a child actor career, but I think what's really reassuring is that his parents are so cool, they're not, they're going to take his lead and they're not going to push him down a route which he doesn't agree with and doesn't want to do. Definitely. Now, after watching the film yesterday, James, I made a load of notes, uh, questions that I wanted to know. The first question, and it, it sort of gives you a good insight into the type of person that I am, uh, is um, how difficult was it to learn the Irish accent? <laughs> um, I loved the, the, I love learning the Irish accent. I love accents, in fact. Are you from Cardiff? I'm from Cardiff, yeah. Are you, could you tell? Can I tell? Yeah, you have you have a quite light accent, which is nice. It's a sweet. It's a, it's a nice. I, I have done the Welsh accent um, once, which I loved in a movie. Um, and this was another challenge which I hadn't done yet. I, I I love, in fact, both Welsh and Northern Irish. Both for me, in English speaking, you know, with an English accent, have such inherent sort of lyricism and expression and tune. And so, I, when I was at drama school, I I took it. For some reason upon myself to crack the Northern Irish accent years ago, 10, 15 hmm. years, never having had an opportunity to, to use it since. And then this film came along and so kind of went back into my head and, and found uh, the work I did and it, and it paid off. And, and, you know, when you crack an accent like that and you have great uh, guidance, Brendan Gunn, brilliant dialect coach in Belfast, um, it really a, assists that transformative process where you leave your own headspace and you enter into someone else's it gives you a kind of practical crutch in order to go on that journey um and and i so i, I generally i thrive i really love the challenge of taking on an accent it is scary when you're yeah. on, in belfast the whole crew are northern irish and you're the only one who doesn't have an oil right now. Oof, I, I i wouldn't want to be in your position in that respect <laughs> um and just finally james uh, i have i have to admit that um I am a great uh, fan of Grantchester and all your other works. And before, um, and watching all the newspaper articles, I'm a massive James Bond fan. It's always been my, uh, literally, and as soon as I saw you in Grantchester, I was like, this man has to be the next James Bond. So if you do become the next James Bond, I want you to remember this interview. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> First, well... Yeah, maybe you're responsible for all the headlines. You called Barbara Broccoli, did you? And, uh, and I mean, I, someone, somewhere, somewhere has um, made that call and it's it's been um, percolating ever since. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, it must be so, it must be so flattering. If you're, if you're going to be in the new Bond film, if you're on the new Bond, I'm volunteering, I'm Q. We got it sorted. There yeah. you go. <laughs> James Norton from all of us, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers, Sam.